gave himself for me. So we have to understand that I'm coming out of Galatians, so I gotta give you a little bit of background about uh, this particular church. Now, these were individuals um, who Paul was seemingly to be most upset with because they lost their first love or they got off track. Because every church should be established in the gospel. But what was going on with this particular church was they had individuals amongst them that were trying to draw them back or bring them back to the old ways of Judaism. And they were trying to implement aspects of the law and mix it in with Christianity. And, you know, Paul was very upset. Like, the words that he used in this particular epistle letter, um, you don't really see that nowhere else in the New Testament. He was highly upset with these individuals. Uh, because it, it's so important. The gospel is the central belief system that all Christianity hangs. And to get that wrong, everything's wrong. Everything's yeah, yeah. put off track. Amen. And Amen. none of it matters anymore. Um, That's right. So we have to get the central theme correct in order to get all the rest of it correct. You know, I don't care how much biblical teaching that you have and how accurate you think it is, if it's not centered in the gospel, oh, and if yeah, you yeah. can't trace it back to the gospel, Amen. Then, it's true. then it's erroneous, it's false, it's, it's true. wrong, it's inaccurate. Amen. You can't take it to the bank. Oh. Amen. So, when we get to this particular verse, when you look at it in principle, it's talking about how Christ died, fulfilled the law in his flesh. He died on the cross, died to the law. We also, yeah. on that same cross with Jesus, and now we can be recipients of the grace because we are no longer under the law. But I'm coming from more of a practical aspect of this verse. Now it reads, I, you know, and, and that's the title of my sermon, I. Well, when you look at that word, I, he's, you look at it, you say, I. Okay, is he talking about Paul? Well, we got to look at this and internalize it for ourselves. And we're looking at it, and if I'm the reader and I say, I, who is he talking about? Now, in two chapters ahead, in chapter five, He's talking about the flesh and the spirit. And then he lists the fruits of the spirit and the works of the flesh. Uh -huh. Now, I can be encapsulated in the works of the flesh. So, anything that's sinful is fleshly. Yes. Anything that's not is spiritual. That's why in chapter 5 you say shine through us right. as the children kind of talked about it earlier in a presentation it's not going to happen automatically so we have this easy believism where oh I just believe that Jesus died and Jesus rose and I'm saved but Paul is coming from a different aspect or a different perspective of the gospel because the gospel isn't simply that it's so much more All in right. it so he said, I have been crucified with Christ. I'm not saying that if you were a funny guy, you're just going to stop being funny. <laughs> if, if you're a serious person, you're just going to stop being serious. He's not taking away and removing personality. Yes. But he is removing any personality traits that are contrary to him. So if you like to steal, that will be eliminated. Um, if you like to commit adultery, fornication, homosexuality, that will be eliminated. Right. Not to say it will be, not to say you won't want to anymore, because the flesh didn't leave. We haven't been glorified yet. So we are still in this Adamic flesh. The flesh in itself is sinful. Paul even said it in Romans chapter 7. He said, there's no good thing no that dwelleth in me. No good thing. So that the flesh is something that we should crucify every day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not just Sunday, oh, every God. day. Not yes, just sir. during the day at work. Yeah. And when you go home, yeah. I 
can be me. <laughs> it don't work like that. This is all the time. I have been crucified. I, all of me, all the time. Yes, sir. I have been crucified. We are to crucify the yes, flesh sir. on a daily basis. That's what it means to believe in the gospel. Yes, sir. So that's why the gospel causes sanctification, meaning spiritual development. That's why we develop. That's why we don't just stay where we are or stay how we are, but we change over time. We spiritually develop because we believe in the gospel. Because it's not just we believe in that fact, but we believe in the why of the gospel. And that's what changes us, the why. Not just, I can tell you that Jesus died and rose, but that's meaningless. How, how does that change my life? What does that mean? Well, first off, it proves that we have eternal life. So now my perspective or worldview is changed. I'm not looking at the here and now as this is it. I understand that this is only a small part Amen. of my life. And now... <laughs> It's been multiplied and multiplied. Like when he took the two fish and the five loaves and fed <laughs> over 20,000 people, you know, including the women and children. Amen. When we look at that, he took a small amount and multiplied it. Well, we give our life to Jesus and he multiplies it yeah, infinitely. Yeah, yeah. So now I don't have to concern myself so much with the here and now. Whether it be my physical status, I'm growing old. We all growing old. We don't particularly like to grow old. We not really happy or praising God when we see a gray hair. <laughs> uh, you know, I might be that exception because I like the distinguished look and I'm getting a few grays in my beard and I like how I look. But there's other aspects of aging that I'm not going to like. I'm not going to like waking up in pain every day. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to like that my skin is going to submit to gravity. I don't want that to happen. I want to keep my vibrant countenance. But, hey, because of Adam, this is what I have to deal with. So we, we, we look at the things um, are our life situations. Some people are rich. Some people aren't. Me. <laughs> so... You know, sometimes it's more month than there is money. Sometimes people get molested. Sometimes people go to jail. Sometimes they go to jail and get raped. Sometimes people die. Sometimes life can suck. This is a reality. This is the reality we live in. You got people walking in churches, shooting up the church. They don't care. There's, there's no distinction anymore. There's no reverence to God anymore. And, and we look at life and we just, you know, sometimes we can get fearful. Sometimes we can be, it can, it can be unnerving. Sometimes we, it, it's, it, it makes us feel uneasy. But this is only a small part of reality for, for the Christian. Specifically the Christian. Those who believe in this gospel. So we don't have to worry or be dismayed or, or be concerned about the stuff that goes on in the world, yes, in our lives, in our particular situations, because it's no longer about this yeah, life. Yeah. This, long, this life should no longer be so important to us. The Apostle John said in 1 John, uh, in chapter 2, he said, do not love the world or the things thereof. The lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Um, get the other one. But in the lust of the eye, this is all encompassing. This is everything that's against the spirit. Everything that's of the flesh, of the world, of this age, of this this culture, of society. We shouldn't love it so much that it becomes bigger than God. It's not about us anymore. And I know this is contrary to what we hear or how we hear the gospel preach, but it's a reality. I have been crucified. You, yeah. me, it's, no, it's not about me anymore. It's not about you. It's about Christ. I like certain things. I don't like certain things. But if what I don't like is contrary to the word of God, awesome. I have to submit. Yes, sir. I don't particularly want to tell people about Christ. 
particularly, because I don't want people to think I'm stupid, ignorant. I'm worried so much about me. But what he's saying, <laughs> go ye therefore. Therefore, I must submit. Therefore, you must submit. You know, we have the right faith, but I like one aspect of the Muslim faith because they talk about submission to Allah. Submission. But it's not that much different here. See, we have so much pride as human beings. And we want to do what we want to do, go where we want to go, and say what we want to say. You, you got individuals say, oh, I'm just speaking my mind. Well, the Bible says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But only that which is good for the use of edifying or edification or building up. In layman's terms, if you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. I'm just opinionated. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of the mouth. So if that opinion is breaking down, then you need to stop being opinionated and keep your opinions to yourself. We have to understand and count the cost. Oh yeah, I just, uh, all you gotta do is believe, no? No, 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 yeah, that's true. But what does believing entail? What does believing that Jesus res was resurrected entail for our lives practically? How does that play out? Jesus, another aspect, we were purchased. He bought us. Yes, yes, we were bought yes, at a yes, price. Yes, yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, round verse 18, 19, 20. We were bought. So if I'm bought, if someone purchased me, then they own me and not me. Your skillet ain't telling you how to cook. <laughs> Your suit jacket doesn't tell you how to wear it or what to wear or where to wear it to. You wear it and you do with that skillet what you choose. Yeah. We are the clay. He is the potter. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a man. I'm a woman. I am the clay. He is the potter. So if he formed me that way, that's the way I am. Because he said, I am what I am. But I'm not I am. He is. And, and that's the aspect that we have to understand. If he created me a certain way, then that's the way I'm supposed to be. If I feel like I'm ugly, it's not about what I think. If God created me, then I'm beautiful because he created me. Everything God created was good. Very good. <laughs> and I'm this creation, so I'm very good. I'm all right. And so are you. And that's where our self-esteem lies. Not in what we have and how much money we have and where we live or how intelligent we are. My identity is in Christ. So once I've accepted Christ, I am his child, I've been adopted. Another aspect of the gospel. His death and resurrection has brought me into the family yeah. of God. All right. No son of God is nothing. No son of God is low. Well, I'm the son of the most high. You the daughter of the most high. You the I, son I, of the I, most I, high. I, I, so walk with your head up. Yeah, right. Why are you looking at the floor? Yeah. And I'm not here. I'm not bringing in legalism. I'm just... I'm trying to give you some imagery to get you an understanding of what's going on with this gospel. We should all have high self-esteem yes, because yes, we serve the most high. If you think you weigh too much, <laughs> you may. <laughs> but, you know, that's because of what you eat. And again, another aspect of the gospel. Now, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So if we're not treating this temple the way we ought to, then a lot of things come out of that. A lot of maladies uh, physically come out of that because we're not taking care of this temple. A lot of the diseases that we have are because we don't take care of this temple. That's another aspect of the gospel. So we're not going to change the temple. In the Old Testament, when God gave Solomon the instructions to make the temple, he was very meticulous in what he wanted. Now we are the temple. Yeah. 
And the Holy Spirit dwells yeah. in us. So be very careful in how you alter this temple because this isn't our temple. This is his temple. My house didn't renovate itself. I renovated it based on what I wanted. We are the house of God. We, not this building. We are the house of God. And we must be very careful about how we alter this house. Again, all of this teaching I'm giving comes straight from the gospel. Amen. I became the temple because God, Jesus, rose from the dead, dwelled for 40 days, ascended to heaven, and he sent back the comforter, the Holy Spirit, to dwell within these temples that he purchased with his precious blood. Again, everything I'm saying, going back to the gospel, that's what teaching should do. It should be centered in Christ, and it should always go back to the gospel. All these words that's before me, they're really the gospel, or they're about the gospel, even the Old Testament. I gave the, I gave the example uh, in previous sermons when you look at Passover, and when they slaughtered the lamb without blemish, male, took the blood, put it over their, door, their doorpost, and then when the angel of death came through, it passed over them. Well, you know, John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus, he said, behold, the Lamb of God. Yeah. And he was slaughtered for our transgressions. Yeah. And now because of his blood, death passes over me or yeah. us. Yeah. Because we are saved and we are given eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me and through me. <laughs> uh, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh. So it ain't talking about just spiritually. It's not just talking about, oh, I can do whatever I want. Uh, because, you know, my spirit has been regenerated. But the body, oh, uh, it, don't, it don't matter. It, I don't have to worry about the body so I can do whatever I want because um, I'm under grace. Mm -mm. If you truly believe in the gospel, it's going to manifest in the flesh, in the physical. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. We didn't see the gospel, but you see the evidence of our faith in it based on our lifestyle. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. So right here, he's specifying it. Not faith in just anything, but the Son of God, Jesus Christ and his death and his resurrection. When Jesus was here, now you got to understand, you know, I think sometimes we can, we can muddle over this and, uh, you know, and not really pay attention to it. When Jesus was here, you got to understand, this is God. He was God. He could have been born to anyone. He could have been born in any social economic position or situation, meaning he didn't have to be born to a poor carpenter. He could have been born to a king. He could have been born to a prince. He could have been born to a rich merchant. But he chose to be born to a poor carpenter. By his choice. He lived homeless. He said, foxes have holes. But the son of God ain't even got a place to lay his head. He chose that. But it was his choice, but it was God the Father's will that he was carrying out. All right. He had the opportunity to become king when he fed the 5,000 and they tried to yeah. make him king. Right. He chose not to. Why? Because that wasn't what his father wanted. All right. All right. We have to crucify the flesh with his passions and desires. Galatians 5, 24. And those who are Christ, those who belong to Christ, have crucified the flesh with it, passions and desires. It's all about what God wants. When Jesus was here, it was all about what God wanted. The popularity that Jesus had, he could have incited a revolution. 
and, and it revolted against the Romans, but he chose not to because that wasn't what he came here for. Mm -hmm. and, and us as Christians, individually and collectively, we have to understand our purpose. Right. One size doesn't fit all. My purpose and your purpose may be completely different. The way you do things and the way I do things may be completely different. Yeah, yeah. You can't expect this man to just follow suit with all these other men or women because that's how they did it. Because he gave each individual a specific purpose and a collective purpose. Look at all the prophets. Each of them had many differences. Yeah, they had similarities. They had to bring the message to the children of Israel or Judah. But they all had differences. They all came, you know, to uh, the calling that God had from uh, the same way, but different. It was differences. And us individually, we have to understand that uh, we have a purpose. And that's why it's so important to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. That's why it's important to have a prayer life. Because you have to communicate with God. That's why it's important to read the word. So we can understand God's will for our lives. Because if we don't understand God's will for our lives, the only thing we can do is what we want to do. If we don't know what God wants us to do, what else can we do? Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because in Romans chapter 7, verse 14, he says, For the law is spiritual, but I am carnal. This is the equivalent of the law to us, as eloquently spoken this morning in Sunday school about this in Stokes. And this is spiritual. So whatever we doing that this says is spiritual. But whatever we doing that's contrary to this is fleshly. And a lot of times, see, when you look at the system of Judaism uh, at this time, not you know modern day Judaism, but Judaism at this time, well, what ended up happening with you had individuals who they were using the law as a means of exaltation. You know, the, the religious leaders were well paid. The religious leader had high esteem in their, in their, in their social circles. So it, it was an incentive to them to follow the law outwardly. <laughs> but in, in, inwardly, they were like <laughs> filthy. So, you know, we have to be careful about trying to just follow it for our own gain. You see it today. A lot of individuals do it just for monetary gain. When you look at a lot of the letters that Paul wrote to Timothy, um, he talked about how they were using the gospel as a means of gain. They were using, you know, what God said as a means of exaltation, as a means to look better in the sight of men. But we don't want to fall in that category. That's why it's so important to follow the Holy Spirit. Because a lot of times we do things for the wrong reasons. And that's really what God is about. God is not necessarily about what you do. He's about why you do what you do. I could get up here and preach for applause. I could get up here and preach for acclaim. I can say things that y'all like to hear just to get a response from you. Mm -hmm. I can even force a response. Say amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if force you to say amen. Just so I feel better for my self-gratification. But if I water down this gospel, right. yeah. if, 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 if I say something that this word yeah, didn't yeah. say, yeah. it said it would not endure sound doctrine. I can't be worried about what y'all like. This is the word. And that's all it's about. If you don't respond, that's great because you're probably listening. I say it time and time before. I'd rather you sit there and say nothing sometimes than be yelling and screaming, but you're not hearing what I'm saying. Yeah, right. You need to understand and hear and listen in order to change and develop spiritually. I, I would love to just give you sugar. I, it's, so, it's so many verses, you know, now unto him who was able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask and think. I can preach that all day. But what does that really mean? But, but, but what's the context of that? Of course you want to hear that. Oh, he's going to do whatever I... No. He said able. He didn't say he was. He said he got the power according to the power that worketh in us. You know, we got we to gotta look at the whole verse and not just say something. You know, that was just an example. We have to stop chasing uh, with our itching ears 
after doctrine and teachings that suit us. Mm -hmm. The Bible is very offensive. The gospel specifically, it says we're, our righteousness is like filthy rags. I thought I was a good person. <laughs> and you got other individuals who are like, well, I, I thought I was good. Well, I go to church every Sunday. You know, I don't really cuss that that much. <laughs> Hey, I give. I do this. I do that. But it, but again, it's why are you doing it? Are you doing it because you believe in this gospel and you don't own you anymore? And it's not about you and you doing everything to please God? Or are you doing all of these things to please man? That's a dangerous line to cross, but we have to be cognizant of its reality. We don't want to fall into that ditch to where, you know, we the blind leading the blind. To where we following these, 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 these teachings in order to get something in return. God gave us everything we need by giving him, or yeah, giving him himself. <laughs> giving us his son. That's it. It's not, oh, I'm going to seek these blessings. Oh, I'm going to do this. So he, now, we get blessings, but we got to understand the most important blessing. His son, his death and his resurrection. Because these little blessings that we get here are nothing. He, can get, he, can, he might bless me with a car. How long that car gonna last? 10 years, 15 maybe if you take care of it. And then it's gone. But there are rewards in heaven that we gonna receive that's gonna last forever. If I get a car in heaven, it's never gonna wear out. It's right. going to last for eternity. Now, I don't know what these rewards that he has for us, but I know they're eternal rewards. And the most important, not reward, but gift that he just gave freely was salvation. Mm -hmm. He gave us salvation. And I get to experience Christ, God, the Holy Spirit, and all their majesty for eternity in this new earth. The new heaven, the new Jerusalem, not just heaven. I'm not just going to heaven. I can experience all of this. And it was a gift. It was a gift. And I didn't have to pay for it. He paid for it. I didn't have to pay. So we must understand the gospel. And what this verse is, it's really talking about the gospel. It's really talking about how it's not about you anymore. Uh, moving on to the end. He say, uh, but Christ lives in me, and the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Again, we got to look at salvation. It's not a reward. It's a gift. Nobody can earn salvation. Nobody can buy it. There is no purgatory. <laughs> I don't care what the Catholics tell you. Purgatory does not exist. Either you are, you're going to be in his presence for eternity or you're not. That's it. There is no middle ground. So don't look at yourselves and say, well, I'm halfway okay. Well, I don't, uh, at least I don't steal and, and hit nobody over the head and I ain't kill nobody. Uh, well, I ain't cheat on my wife lately. But, you know, <laughs> you, you know we, we, have to, we have to do away with this uh, inaccurate self-image and portrayal of ourselves and understand that without the grace of God, None of this could be possible. Thank you. What? He didn't say it at the end. That's all he got. That's all he got. <laughs>